these uh, web applications are expected to present real-time data and react to user actions in real time as well as present uh, changes in data in real time to the user uh, without the user having to refresh their browser or uh, reload the page or anything like that. So um, there might be several users using an application at the same time and as they create data or update or modify data, uh, all the users should uh, see the modifications in data uh, on their uh, browser in, you know, without repression in real time. So that is the expectation and um, Svelte is more than ready to do that. Especially we have Svelte stores which are designed for that exact uh, feature. Svelte stores, uh, they, can, uh, they can represent subscriptions and those subscriptions uh, and the stores basically can re-render the page, the Svelte component that you're looking at uh, in real time as the subscription, the value of that uh, encapsulated uh, data changes within the subscription. And we will see how we can use uh, Postgres database and query it using GraphQL, mutate it, query it, and also subscribe to live changes in real time. And to do that, we will use um, a very nice uh, open source software called Hasura. Um, we will combine Svelte stores with Hasura and Postgres database to create a real time to-do list. So let's take a, let's get started. All right, so the first thing we will do is create our uh, basic Svelte app. So CD dev Svelte and there, let me just say NPX. This is how we usually start all our Svelte applications. NPX dig it. Uh, Svelte JS slash template. And then we will call this Hasura dash to do. Okay. Been created. Let's open this uh, application. Uh, first thing we do is we run npm install. Good. So once that has been done, we uh, try. We can run dev if you want um, and open that dev in here. Oops, I think I lost that. So. Okay, and open this uh, localhost 5000. So that's right. So this is our standard um, standard hello world from Svelte. No problem. Let's uh, remove extra stuff from this. We can uh, go into app.svelte and remove everything that we don't need, which is almost everything. And now we are going to add uh, GraphQL and everything else to it. But before we do that, let us download and run Hasura. So in order to run Hasura, what we what we will do is we will. So this is the Hasura website. And what I will do is if I say Google and then say Hasura Docker, if you do that. And you see quick start with Docker, Hasura 1.0 documentation, and click on the get Docker compose file. Now all of this information I will, I will include in my uh, show notes uh, as well as the source code. But let's just copy this, uh, this uh, URL and we go to my Hasura directory. I have created an empty directory and I am going to download that particular file. So to download and save that file, I am going, you can do either wget, wget and then the file, or in my case, I have curl, so I will use curl minus capital O. So, okay, once I do that, I have a Docker compose file. Uh, I can show you what it looks like in, uh, so this is our Docker Compose file. Mainly it has Postgres database and it has GraphQL engine, which is Hasura, 
GraphQL engine version 1.1.0 and it exposes itself on port 8080 which is fine so um, now in order to run this you have to have a docker installed if you don't have docker you can install it or you could just uh, download all the components which is have um, postgres as well as hasura install it on your uh, on your um, laptop or in a server uh, but I think Docker is the easiest. Once you have that up and running, all you have to do is say Docker compose up minus D as in detached mode. Uh, don't worry if you don't know Docker, it's all right. Um, there are other ways to run this. So here, Hasura is running now. Uh, that's good. Now that that is running, let me go to um, the console so if i go to local host 8080 that's hasura okay so now in here there are two tabs there are many tabs but the ones that i am interested in is graphical and data so first we will have to create a database table uh, this is our interface, a, a nice graphical interface to PostgreSQL database. And graphical is a, a GraphQL explorer. Okay, so let's first create a database table. So we click add table. Sorry, not add. Uh, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, add table. We will call it to do. And in that table, we will have a column called ID, which will be of type integer auto increment. Then next one will be the title, which is the title of the to-do uh, of type text. And the next one will be completed uh, status. That is the status of the to-do and it will be Boolean and we'll give it a default value of false. Okay. Then we select a primary key, that's ID. And I think this is it. Let's click add table. That's it. So it created the table and the table has no rows at this point. So now that we have created the table, let's go to graphical and start either querying or inserting into the table. Uh, so, uh, well, I guess since it has no, uh, no data in it, let's start with an insert. So the way you do insert is you can either click uh, on the documentation explorer or you can also hit this explorer and then select a mutation and click plus. So that has added mutation. We will rename this mutation as insert to do. Then we click on this uh, mutation type insert to do and it says in that uh, uh, how do you want to, what are the values you want to in, in, uh, insert fields. So we don't want, we will not determine ID. ID is going to be auto generated, but title and completed we can give. Now, uh, and then when the result arrives, we click, we want the number of affected rows or, or, or rather we want the ID. In fact, that's probably what we really want. And number of rows and ID. So now every time you are going to insert, you're not going to use a blank title. You're going to use a variable value. So why don't we replace this with a dollar title variable and then create a parameter here called dollar sign title. And uh, the type of this will be string and it is required. So we will say string uh, exclamation sign. Once you do this, you can, you have a mutation that takes one parameter called title. So let's create a variable called, so if I, so in the query variables, I say curly brace and then press control space and it already tells me what variables it can take and the title is going to be i will call a title of foo or something or do something that's your to do okay so now if i hit graphical uh, play this play button execute query it ran and look it has it says it returned an object the object object has one property called data which is another object has a property called insert to do and that is another object that has affected rows equal to one and returning is an array uh, first member of which is id so now if i go 
to data and then run uh, look, click on to do table and run the query it shows that we have something called to do uh, id equal to one title is do something and complete it false so this is good uh, we are able to um, insert to do's let's try to insert this now that we have the basic uh, understanding of what query we have to run let's go back to graphical and we will copy this uh, mutation and then execute it from our Svelte application. Let's get back to Svelte application. First thing we have to do is we have to stop this dev server because I am going to add a whole bunch of um, dependencies. So now which dependencies we want, we can find out by going to um, internet and say, a search for Apollo client subscriptions API subscription. Let's see if we can find. There it is. Yeah, first subscription client React. We are not doing this in React. We are doing this in in uh, in Svelte, but uh, the basic uh, basics will remain the same. Okay. So one of the things is uh, when you are doing this with Apollo client, uh, you make sure you, you you do it with Apollo Apollo client and not with um, not with Apollo Boost. Okay. So there are some different uh, dependencies that we have to uh, include when we are. Uh, keep in mind we are going to do subscriptions now what are subscriptions subscriptions are basically queries that you run and they uh, keep running and they keep producing new results uh, in real time as long as th the result is changing which means if you ran a query let me just show you actually it will be easier to show than um, than this so let's let's look at a, a subscription uh, i will create two two browsers instead of one so let me show you what a subscription looks like. So this is the insert. Let's uh, in in this tab we will create a um, a subscription. Let's do that. So clear this out, and I will say in add new subscription, and I will pl click plus on that, and then. My subscription will be uh, will be called to do's subscription to do's. We can say to do's query. Okay, so now we go to to do's, and we want to get these three items. So here it is. It's very simple. Uh, there are no uh, query variables. And if I now execute this. Okay, sorry, it's uh, it's a bit on the right, so let me just make this smaller. Oh yeah, so I ran this. It on the right hand side, you see the result of the subscription, which shows us uh, one particular to do. Let us now create uh, in the left hand side window. Let's now create a second to do, and that will make it clear what a subscription is. So there was one first to do was do something. Let's uh, uh, call it do some more. Okay. Now, if I watch what happens in this window, okay. Right now, there is one to do shown, and when I hit this play button and insert a new to do on the right hand side, you will see new data show up. There you go. This is the new data. So this is what a subscription is. If I if I do um, so let's say do it again, right? And and then I hit play once again, watch this area. And then yet another one. So this is what a subscription is. A subscription is a query that reruns itself in real time whenever the data changes, okay? Now, in order to, to make use of, of subscription, we, we will basically, what we will do is we will subscribe to, a, to this query and then we will use Svelte stores to re up re-render and update the UI, okay? So in order to do that, we have we will use uh, this um, GraphQL client called Apollo client. So what I did was I simply searched for Apollo client API subscriptions. When I did that, 
and the very first result was the correct one. I click on that, and now it says if you want to do uh, subscription with GraphQL, you have to have some extra um, items. So let's copy this. Uh, so it says you have to install these NPM modules, Apollo Link WS and Apollo Transport WS. So let's copy this or just click this. And now we go to our, uh, our IDE and paste this. So NPM install save Apollo Link WS means WebSocket and Transport WS. Okay, so I save that. Once I do that, my package.json now contains, well, let's see what it contains. It contains Apollo link WS and subscription transport WS. There are a few other things that, that I actually need. Uh, let me let me make sure I have those. Okay, so I had it in my, there it is. This is the list of uh, NPM modules that I need. I need uh, to install Apollo client, Apollo cache in memory, Apollo link HTTP, Apollo link error, Apollo link, GraphQL tag, GraphQL, Apollo link web sockets, and subscriptions transport web sockets. So this is a longish list. Once again, uh, I will have the source code and, and this information uh, available with the video. Let's press enter. So it is adding uh, a few different um, NPM packages. Now that that is done, we can go back to coding. So in our app.svelte, uh, what we will do is we will we want to insert a to do. Okay, that's the first thing we want to do. Um, but before we insert the to do, let's create a separate .js file which helps us um, connect to GraphQL server that uh, Hasura has created. So let's call it graphql-client.js. And in there, we will add a few uh, things. So now, uh, what should we add? Uh, all that information is in my in, in this, uh, this example. So what you have to do is, let's, let's uh, copy and paste all of this, copy from here, and then paste uh, into this okay a gra a graphql client.js so you we are let's now let's try to understand what we are doing uh, we have when we want to uh, query in real time through subscription we need websocket link but when we want to update or insert uh, the to do we need http link so that's why we need both and uh, and the url of our uh, uh, of our GraphQL endpoint is localhost, oops, okay, localhost, sorry, localhost 8080, 80, and then v1 slash GraphQL, that's, and the HTTP link is protocol HTTP, and then the WebSocket link is localhost, WS colon, slash slash localhost 8080 v1 graph ql the same thing so the only difference between these two is one is lo uh, http the other is ws as in websocket and the options reconnect is true so that if we lose the uh, the connection uh, the client tries to reconnect now this is important the split split and so we create a special link so there is an http link there is a websocket link and there is a third link, which is a combination of HTTP and WebSocket. And how does it choose between WebSocket and HTTP? You give it a Lambda function, which takes uh, the complete um, operation type. One of the things in there is the query property. We destructure that into query. And then we use this get main definition, this one, um, from Apollo Utilities, and that allows us to parse the query or get some metadata information about the query. And as long as the definition.kind is operation definition and the 
most importantly definition dot operation is subscription if if this evaluates to true then we want to use websocket link otherwise we want to use http links which means mutations and queries will go through http link while subscriptions will go through the ws link okay now once you have all these things all you have to do is um, get yourself the apollo client so the way you do that is uh, you import apollo client from apollo client simple and when we and then from this file we say export default new apollo client and so we are creating a new graphql apollo client and it takes an options object and the options are going to be uh, two, two options uh, one is the the cache and the link so the link is going to be link colon link which of course you don't need to repeat you can simply say link and the second thing is cache and the cache is going to be in memory cache so which we have to import so import in memory cache from Apollo cache in memory and let me make sure that is the yeah so so right so once you do all that you have the in memory cache uh, and we just say new in memory cache that I think should be enough right so let's take a look again uh, we have two types of links HTTP links link for queries and uh, mutations websocket link for subscriptions and then we have a combined link which is created from the split function coming from Apollo link and that has a has a lambda function that checks that the uh, operation is of type subscription the operation is subscription if it is a subscription then it uses the first one uh, which is uh, websocket otherwise for mutations and queries, it uses HTTP link. All right, with those things in place, I think we are ready to make a mutation query. So first thing we do is in our app, we say import, um, let's say client from the current directory slash GraphQL client.js and then once we have the client, we are going to insert it. So first let's build a form. Let's say form in there, we will have a, an input type. Well, type is text, of course. Let's give it a placeholder. Uh, enter to do title, okay? And that's your, uh, and then we have to bind it. Let's create a local variable called let to do is equal to an, an object with title is equal to blank. Okay, and then we will add a button of type submit and label submit. Let's uh, format it and save it. Okay, are we running? No, we are not running. So let me run the dev server. Okay, it looks like it's it, it didn't give any compilation errors. So that's your uh, enter to do title and there is a submit button. At this point, this form will not do anything useful. So let's add in on colon submit handler and then make sure it, the pre default is prevented which because the default is to submit the form and we will give it a name, uh, give it a, a handler a a JavaScript function. Let's call it save, uh, save, no, let's call it insert to do. All right, so let's define that function. We can say function insert to do, but we will say async function to do. 
uh, insert to do. Why? Because we are going to do, be doing asynchronous activities such as inserting. Okay. And uh, when it does that, uh, so insert will simply insert this to do object whose title is bound to input, which we forgot to bind. So let's bind it. Say bind the input value to to do dot title. So now title will be bound to this input. Okay. Now, when we want to insert, we want to execute a mutation query. So let's say um, let's create a mutation query. Um, do we remember what the mutation query was? Of course, I don't. So let's uh, find that mutation query. Here it is, the insert to do mutation. Let's copy this and const mutation is equal to, now we have to import the GQL uh, tag. So import GQL from uh, from GraphQL client or tag, I think. Yeah, so oh, that's not, um, that's the default export, so we don't have to do this. So, sorry about that. Okay, so we are importing the GQL tag. This tag is needed because we are going to wrap that tag around our actual mutation query. So there it is. So this is the mutation called insert to do. It takes one parameter title, which is of type string. And then uh, it calls insert to do with all these things. Okay. Uh, and it will return you affected rows and the array of IDs that it inserted. Let's, uh, now, in order to um, actually do the mutation, we have to say client, which we got from GraphQL client, which we have created, dot mutate. And then remember, this is not a query. This is a mutation. So we have to say client dot mutate. And then in there, there are two parameters. One is the query, param uh, not query, sorry, mutation parameter. Yeah, mutation. And the mutation, the value of that mut mutation is this mutation. So we simply, uh, instead of saying mutation colon mutation, we can just say mutation. And the variables, these are the parameters and the variables are going to be, remember it takes one parameter called title. So we have to say title is equal to to do dot title. So that's what it is going to insert. Let us see if this works. So uh, save it and let's, uh, so at this point, our database, let's look at the database. Uh, oh, why not Why not look at this? This is our real time uh, query. It has three, do something, do some more and do it again, right? So if it gets the fourth one, then we have succeeded. Okay, and let's call it keep doing it. I don't know if this will succeed, but I clicked enter and wow, it worked. There it is, it says keep doing it. So, so we have four to do now, that's great. So which means our insert is working. All we have to do now is get the uh, subscription working. At this point, we are able to insert. Uh, so let's, let's see how to do subscription. In order to do subscription, we have to uh, call, let's, uh, we have to, what do we, yeah, we have to say const to do's equal to client dot subscribe. And then the subscribe takes one parameter, which is the query. So, and the query is going to be, what's, what, what is our query? The query is const query is equal to, again, GQL reverse tick. So these back ticks allow us to make uh, multi-line strings. And now if I go to my subscription, here's my subscription right here. So that's my subscription, copy it. And then uh, 
insert that query in here. Okay, so this is what my query for the subscription looks like. I want to get um, all the to-dos, completed ID and title, all three of them present. Now, I will simply say query equal to is colon query, or I'll just shorten it to say query. So this gives me, a, so this is the magic of Svelte. Client.subscribe returns an observable. And if you know anything about observables, then you know that observables have a dot subscribe method. And as you might know that in Svelte, any JavaScript object with a subscribe method is a valid store. And because it is a valid store, it changes everything. We can use that valid store to show us um, uh, we can use that store to uh, subscribe and then also repaint and re-render our Svelte UI. Uh, so let me explain. How, I mean, let me show you the code. So the code is going to be, let's create a table. Table. Table has a T body. T body. And T body has a, a row, right? So we will say, um, well, the row is going to be repeated. So let's say each pound sign each, Svelte has a pound sign each loop. And then we will say to do's. Now look at the uh, response that we are getting. We are getting to do's in that data to do, which is an array. So we can say to do's dot data dot to do as T. Problem is, um, and then we can close the each. Uh, the problem is to do's is a store. So when you want to subscribe, auto subscribe to the store, you, the, remember uh, this is GraphQL subscription. While when we say talk about subscribe uh, here, we are talking about Svelte subs subscri uh, store subscription. So we have to put a sol dollar sign in front of the store name. And now we can say tr produce a row and in there uh, put a td, sorry, td and show me the id which is t.id and then let's repeat this. Uh, show me the id, show me the title and then finally show me the completed Right now, what we see is we are going to see the the to dos, right? So let us see if this works. Okay, save this, and we saved it, and it didn't work. Something broke. So if we inspect and uh, look at the so here's my um, so it says cannot read property data of undefined in app dot svelte line 49, which is this place, okay? So the problem there is that to in the beginning, the there is no value stored in the store. And therefore we have to wrap the whole thing in an if statement. And we have to say if dollar to do's has a value and dollar to do's dot data has a value, right? Then only, do the rest and we will close the if after this each well i guess we we don't want to show the whole table so let's put it outside yeah so let's close the if and let's reformat it reindent it so now when i save this oops i messed up yes so now when i save it look haha -ha, i got my table all my four to-dos are here. Do something, number one, two, three, four. Do something, do some more, do it again, keep doing it. And the completed status is always false. So if you wanted to have a heading, you can put that heading right here, T head. And then um, again, the same TR, TH, the first one is ID, 
second and third are title and status completed status okay so you got the id title status nice now the thing is um let me let me this is very important it is so deceptively simple and it's made simple because of Svelte. And in this particular case, GraphQL and Hasura are also helping. All we did was client dot subscribe, run this query and subscribe to it and keep rerunning it or keep uh, returning new data as the data changes. And here's the, the subscription. It's, it's, it's deceptively simple. Uh, let's do a couple of more things. Uh, you can actually do order by so so that new ones show up at the at the top uh, so right now if i if i add a uh, number five let's say five I hit submit then five showed up look it, it showed up in real time we did not query it the subscription brought it the only problem is that five is at the bottom so if you want to show five at the top uh, all we have to do is go into this explorer and then uh, oh, there is an uh, yeah open this order by and click ID instead of ascending, let's say descending. So now when you do that, it, it showed you what query you should see. This is so helpful. It says you should in your to do, you have to give this parameter order by uh, with an object ID whose value property value is uh, descending. So now you can just add this to the query. And once you do that and I save it, and now everything shows up in the reverse order. So highest ID is first. And so now if I add uh, to do number six, to do six, right, I hit, and then to do six at the top. Great, this is very nice. And um, all of this is made possible by this uh, Apollo client, which is subscribing to a GraphQL subscription. Uh, the subscriptions are provided by Hasura, and Hasura is storing everything in PostgreSQL. And then Svelte store, because this the subscription object has a subscribe method, so it becomes automatically becomes a Svelte store. And now once you have a Svelte store, you put a dollar sign in front of the, uh, the variable that is an auto subscribed operator. And now you, you check the value that the to-dos has a value. And within that, to-dos has data specifically. Once you have all those things, then only you want to display the table. And once you get into the table, you say, okay, now loop over the to-dos.data.todo as T and then display that. Let's, uh, one more thing that I, we should do probably is, uh, you know, when the, uh, when the to-dos, they get completed, we should have, uh, we should be able to um, update them. Yeah, so when we have done the to-do. So instead of this hard, uh, this uh, read-only status, let us make it updatable. So all we will do is in here, instead of showing it like this, we will uh, say, how about if we show a checkbox? So we will create a label and, uh, the label wraps the value. Okay, and then we will inject a checkbox right in the middle of it. Um, we will say input type checkbox. Oh, I, I lost everything. Okay, let me just, okay. Input type checkbox and then the we will bind the checked property to t dot completed right so that's your input type checkbox and now that's your label but we have to close the input checkbox and then within the body the text of the label is going to be if t is completed Right, then show completed or done. Let's say, let's call it done, show done. 
otherwise show pending okay let's close this let's save it see what happens there you go so we got all these checkboxes now the thing is when these checkboxes change they will change only within the browser's memory so we have to change it up on the server so in order to accomplish that we will okay and this might be a little bit harder for you to read because it's okay yeah so what we will do let's uh, let's see if i can okay yeah reformatting helps so if i now whenever it changes on change of the checkbox we should say update to do this update the completion status so in order for to do that we will create a new method function rather called update so there is this insert to do let's create let's uh, let's duplicate it it's this is going to be another mutation so copy and then paste so we just duplicated the method and now it's instead of insert it's going to be update now the thing about update is let's see use this graphql explorer once again to uh, learn to update uh, first of all we go back to the explorer clear this one out because we want to insert we want to add new mutation and this mutation let's click add and now in this mutation we want to update so let's hit update and what do we want to do we want to set the value of completed and where we have to have an id clause where and that where is going to be that where id is equal to something now in this case they gave us a, a hard coded value but that's okay now once you have all that information you can go back and say update to do where id is not going to be 10 it's going to be a variable so we will say dollar id and let's make dollar id a parameter so dollar sign id it's of type integer so if you do this completion yeah it, it should yeah so if you i'm pressing control space and that's the int integer and exclamation sign means it's required you have to give it and then instead of completed being false we are going to say completed is equal to dollar completed um, so and that is another parameter so we just add it here to the mutation dollar completed and it is of type boolean oops boolean and it is required okay uh, now we will rename our mutation to update to do oh okay the other thing is if this thing uh, the reason why it's showing an error is because you are not dealing with the result so let's deal with the result okay uh, my i need to make this window bigger yes so let's deal with the result and we deal with it by putting curly braces behind at the end and then affected rows let's let's return up affected rows now in order to update it let's look at the data that we have we have id equal to let's say id equal to 3 do it again let's make that completed so we just say in parameters we give give id and the value of that id is 3 and then the value of completed is going to be true so if i run this query mutation rather then affected rows is this but then over here uh, you will see id3 should have changed there it is completed equal to true everything else was the same in fact within our application look three got updated we did not refresh so this is working for all subscribers this is great so now all we have to do is come back copy this this query out of here and put it in here mutation paste oops we have to format it nicely indent it properly okay so mutation update to do takes two parameters all this is good and now we call the same update uh, mutation client dot mutate give it this mutation and then variables instead of title we have to give two things one is the id and the second uh, id is, okay so update to do should take a parameter and that parameter would be the to do that we are updating and we have to provide the id which is the id of the to do 
id equal to to do dot id and then completed is to do dot completed right so this these two properties come from the to do object so now when we call update to do here we have to call it with the to do parameter so because as you know this is an event handler event handler will take an event which we are not using so instead we have to provide it with the to do and the that to do is t in here inside this each loop uh, the to do is called t and now uh, that to do will be assigned to this to do that t will be assigned to this to do and then we will use the id and the completed status to update it all right let's see if this works save it okay uh, now let us uh, look at this affected rows yeah here let's look at this live query hopefully it will change um, let's mark the first one do something as done okay so this is my do something i click pending and it is done uh, so did completed go to, oh wait do something yeah do something is completed true it's working wow uh if i hit now to be very very sure you can also look at the uh, database so back in the database when you look at the to do's and the do something is completed true and do it again is also true others are false if i go to go and uh, keep doing it make that i checked that and look it came back initially did you see for a second it was i checked the checkbox it was still pending and then a second later it became done that's because the subscription first we executed the mutation and then mutation executed and then sorry the mutation is where is the mutation Yeah, so this update to do, this mutation ex executed and took a, it took a second for the uh, subscription to realize that things have changed and the sub subscription gave a new updated value. And that's how. So now at this point, if we check everything as pen, so if I check this and this and this, everything is true now. And back here, if I run the query in the database, everything is true. Uh, if I uncheck to do six, it's pending now if i run the query again then to do six is completed false and obviously this um, this live query subscription that is is also to do six completed false so this shows you how to now all of this was possible for um, some very very well chosen uh, pieces of our architecture one is postgres which is a nice database second thing is hasura now once again i will show you hasura is running over here and hasura has two parts the graph graphical explorer uh, graphql explorer and then the database explorer also which is this guy uh, so hasura basically puts a graphql front end on top of postgres and then uh, quite important then we used uh, um, the apollo client which gives us the ability to run queries and mutations as well as subscriptions and not only that it gives us the option of doing it with http link as well as websocket link and then it gives us an ability to split between the websocket and http link uh, based if, uh, so send everything to, to http link except when the, the operation is of type subscription and then we combine those things into a single link and uh, create an Apollo client. And that Apollo client can be used for doing mutations. And so insert to do mutation, as well as update to do mutations. And uh, uh, finally, we run this subscription. This is so simple. All you do is client or subscribe and give it the query. And the query is very simple. It simply looks for all the to do's and when you assign that to this local variable to do's that becomes a swelt store why does it become a swelt store because the client.subscribe method returns as you can see here it returns a sorry where, where is it it returns an observable that's the important thing 
because it returns an observable observables you might know have a dot subscribe method this which is different from this method okay so to do dot subscribe makes it a an obs, uh, observe uh, makes it a swell store and now once you once it is a swell store you can put a dollar sign operator in front of it prefix dollar sign and now use it like a local variable which is auto subscribed and its variable uh, the value the store value is extracted and we check that there is a value and there is some data in it and then run and show this table so this is our um, very simple clean example very few lines like you know in 80 90 lines we have this and then a little bit of the code here so creating real time applications um, is is quite easy i would say in svelte and i think that we should yeah so let me just uh, um, show you the this uh, the slide um, yeah so creating real time application is is quite easy um, now with svelte so i hope uh, you found that satisfying and uh, uh, edifying because uh, svelte makes a creation of real time applications very easy uh, combined with you can do this in firebase of course um, a lot of people do to do apps, uh, real time apps in Firebase. But the problem with Firebase is that is it's owned by Google. You are not hosting it yourself here. Hasura and Postgres is something you can host yourself on your own server and uh, control all your costs. Uh, everything is within your control. So in that sense, it's very, very helpful. Uh, also, keep in mind the way we installed Hasura um, it's a uh, all the permissions are open the security has not been tightened uh, so you would have to fix all that uh, you can get more information about hasura by going to hasura.io um, here it is hasura.io and like i said you can get that do docker container um, which will give you both graphql front end uh, graphql server as well as uh, Postgres. So, and that is how we are able to create these Svelte app apps that are updating in real time. Look at that. <laughs> so, hope you learned something. Please uh, subscribe and uh, um, comment and like and let me know what what other types of videos you would like to see. Um, I have been getting some good feedback, and that is very encouraging. Uh, that is what drives me to create more videos and make them, uh, you know, as useful, educational as possible. Uh, uh, we will keep doing more Svelte videos, and I do believe that Svelte has the potential to replace React as the primary, the most favorite um, JavaScript UI framework or compiler, I would say. So uh, let's uh, let's make sure that we spread the information about Svelte and. Uh, and make JavaScript uh, UI applications uh, easy to create and very, um, very smooth, pleasurable, and increase developer productivity. Thanks.